If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it'll move. Nothing will be impossible for you. That's a pretty mind blowing statement. A mustard seed. I've actually grown mustard seed on my farm. It's very small. It's like the size of a little callus on your finger. I think with Jesus Christ, I'm not an expert on Jesus, but I think what he was saying is it only takes a little bit of faith to win. So some of you think you have to have a lot of faith. Have a little faith in your ability. Expect to win. But simultaneously, you must practice because there's multiple fabrics to reality. One spirituality, but one is science. And you can't. And by the way, some of you are a little too scientific. And that's why you're losing. I don't know any rich scientists, by the way. They're way too practical. They're like, ah, oh, you can't make money. I did the statistical odds. Meanwhile, less intelligent people are just blowing by them. You know, that's why I said Elon is a little bit of, of a blend of both. He believes in, you know, there's something bigger than mankind. He believes in space. He He's kind of that. He told me his favorite book is like The Hobbit. You know, I said, why The Hobbit? He said, because it tells you you should do something even if you can lose he's both a scientist and a kind of a you know expanded mind person but it's very important you're going to need both i promise you some of you are too scientific and i promise you some of you are too spiritual and that and, and that's actually probably for those of you who don't like your income where are you imbalanced i've been too imbalanced at certain times I've been very scientific. I think you're working hard. You're following all the principles of Ray Dalio. You're following mental frameworks, but it doesn't quite win. And part of that is because we got new science in. Nobel Prize winning science. So some of you can be like pseudoscience. It ain't pseudoscience if it wins a damn Nobel Prize, okay? Local realism is not real, meaning you understanding yourself as a poor person that exists because you render it in your own mind. The obstacles that you see, some of it, you're just rendering it. You know, a computer screen renders. When you close your laptop, there's nothing on the screen. When you open it, it renders the screen. Zoop. That, Einstein was wrong. When you look away from the moon, it's not there. But when you turn to it, zoop, the moon comes. If you don't believe me, Google it. Now, how do, what does that have to do with money? Well. If you don't believe you're going to make any money, you will render a reality where no matter what you do, for some reason, it doesn't quite work. Who feels that way? You've been doing all the right things. And some reason, you just, you're just you stuck. Be honest. Who feels stuck? You've been. I saw a video on Instagram where a woman said she's taken out $68,000 worth of loans to buy courses. Okay. One, say what you want about me selling courses. There ain't nobody ever been in debt, 68,000 from buying my courses. I never let my sales guy, my, most of my courses are a thousand bucks. Okay. She had bought 68,000 over with the courses and now, and never figured out how to make any money. She was trying everything, you know, but I bet you, if I met that woman, I would tell her you're being too practical about it. It's not just courses, damn it. You have 10 people. I've seen 10 people. I've seen millions of people watch my videos and not everybody wins. Now, you might think it's genetics. You might think in this luck or fate or fortune. Yes, but the people who win were a little more confident than they should be. I've seen that pattern over and over. I'm, I'm friends. I became friends with quite a few professional athletes because I wanted to understand. I've never met a professional athlete that got to the top. That's not a little overconfident. You're going to need a little. Now, I've seen people get too confident, but to win, you want to be a little bit too confident, just a little bit. Just a little bit. There's a basketball, there's a football player in the United States. Anybody know who T.O. is? Terrell Owens, American football, for those of you who are not American. He's, a, he's I think he's going into the Hall of Fame now. Um, he made $100 million playing American football. Anyway. We used to do a YouTube show together called T.O. T with T.O. and Ty. We would have T and talk sports. The man was the most, I never met a dude with that level of confidence. We would go play basketball and he would be like, Ty, I should have played basketball. He's like, I'm way better than Kobe Bryant. And I'm like, T.O. Because I, I played against T.O. He ain't as good as Kobe Bryant. Trust me. Okay. He's not as tall. He not, but 
Tio, I could not convince Tio. He's like, Ty, any sport I wanted to play, I would have been the best. He's like, I picked the wrong sport. I played football. I should have played. He's only like 6'2". I'm like, you would have got destroyed in basketball, but you could. he was the fabric of reality. His fabric, in terms of what he rendered in the universe, was any sport he played, he was the best. But he was humble enough that he would ask me questions. You know, Chris Paul is a, is a good friend of mine. He's a Hall of Fame basketball player. He's made over 300 million U.S. dollars playing basketball. He's very confident about basketball. But outside of that, he's a very humble guy. First time he met me, he's like, Ty, I, I follow all your book recommendations. I'm always trying to learn. I, he, he has mentors, Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney. So that's what I said. I've seen this at the top levels, both with billionaires, with pro athletes. They're this weirdo combination of scientist, you know, they put in the work, they're disciplined, they follow the rules, they stretch, they exercise, they sleep a lot. They they and they're also like mindset people. It's a little bit of both. And so for anybody who feels stuck now, most likely your ratios of spiritual to practical are a little wacky. You're a little too practical. It's not just going to be practical that gets you to win. It's going to be a little bit in the, it's going to be in the mind. The mind renders reality. Okay. Imagine your, a real practical thing to do is imagine, or it's not practical, but a mind bending thing. Imagine there's every version of the universe with you winning. There's a version. There's a guy, Joseph Stone. I don't know you, but I see your face there. Joseph, there is, according to Stephen Hawking. Okay. According to David Deutsch from Oxford, there's a universe where you're the richest man in the world. There's also a universe where you're the poorest person to ever live. So now, can we time travel or parallel universe skip around? Nobody knows. That's the truth. In fact, in the book, Fabric of Reality, there's a chapter on time travel. Most likely, we're going to figure out how to travel in time in the future. Travel into the past is more complicated. Traveling to the future is just more efficient rockets. So already scientists are saying, eh, the time travel into the future will not be that hard. Into the past is a little more complicated, but that's only our given mindset. In 10, 20 years, there's going to be quantum computing, just so you all know. Okay, your grandkids will know about quantum computing. And just remember, there's a famous saying by scientists, every new technology seems like magic. Imagine the first airplane. You know, they said, they used to say, man can't fly. Your ancestors are like, man can't fly. I'm talking to you all. Do you know, realize we're talking to you all through a weirdo thing. I'm sitting here in Europe and it's as if I'm in front of all of you. Now, to us, that's science, but that's magic a hundred years ago. That's magic. So in a hundred years from now, there'll be quantum computing. That will be so, I mean, quantum computers basically they think will be almost be able to travel in time. So, I mean, the world is a wild place. We are using at best 5% of our brain. Most people, maybe a few people use 10 to 20. There's latent potential. That's in that book, The Expectation Effect. You're underestimating the success you can have on a YouTube channel as an affiliate. All of you. I, I bet you 99%. There's a few of you overestimating yourself. Let's say 60, 40, 40% 40 of this room is going to be like, ah, oh, I can make a million dollars on YouTube with 10 units of energy. You're a little too optimistic, but most of you are too pessimistic. So play with the mind, be a mad scientist, try three days of being more confident and then three, try three days of being more cynical. See which one works. I'm actually doing a three day <laughs> ever since I read that fabric reality. I'm like for three days, I'm going to try to bend reality. And uh, you want to know an interesting thing? So here's an interesting thing. The first day, that was yesterday. I was talking to my COO, somebody who works for me. And I was thinking, you know, one of my big regrets is in 2004, I started this business in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it went well the first month. And then I just like got too busy and I didn't finish it. Okay. This is weird. So that was like, 30 hours ago, I had that conversation. About 12 hours later, my COO called me, okay? I mean, sorry, my 
best friend, one of my best friends called me. He calls me once a year at the most. Okay. We usually talk on WhatsApp. He just calls me out of the blue. So I'm on the phone with him. He brings up randomly the business from 2003. He goes, how come we didn't launch that business? I'm going, what are the odds that I'm talking to one person on my first day of my bent, mind bending? And the next day, I mean, the same day, two unrelated people call me and bring up the same subject. They've never brought up the subject in 10 years. So this is my first day. I'm on day two. So far, I'm waiting. For, I'm trying to think. Nothing has stood out so far really to catch my attention. But sometimes you don't see it until retrospect. So for those of you who are, are a little bit cynical, I want you to try a three-day mad scientist experiment where you're going to try to imagine you already have what you want. Now, for those of you who've been doing manifesting for the last 10 years and you still don't have what you want, I want you to try the opposite. I want you to go three days with no manifestation, just hardcore science, practice skill-based Read a damn textbook. Practice math. I want you to do the opposite experiment. Because I, I don't know why I never thought about this before until I read this fabric of reality. It's possible that multiple realities, that spiritual and science could be working at the same time. It's very funny. Every scientific person I know completely shuts down spirituality and says it's complete garbage. And basically every spiritual person I know basically says scientists are too logical. What if they're both correct at the same time? That is, I think, what we're going to discover, that prayer and science work. My my uh, stepdad used to say, pray to God, but put your seatbelt on. That was a good, damn, profound saying. Pray, but wear your seatbelt. He, maybe he somehow knew the fabrics of reality. So for all you praying a lot to make money, great, pray, but study more and practice more. For those of you practicing too much, pray.